Good vibes only. We are one year old today. Good vibes only record label dropped its first track, Lift Me Up, by Mr. Freed in the Sample Universe and a bunch of other dope people who helped create this song um, from the Slice of Heaven sample pack. Shout out to Uncle, shout out to Bessex, shout out to Sphere Bear. Um, shout out to Little Heaven Studios, Keys, and you know, everybody who played a part. Aline, um, Vincent for introducing me to Little Heaven Studios, um, all the great artists set. Yo, Al Bentley, what's up, brother? How you doing? So, yeah, one year. I'm like so happy I did this because I was so close to not doing it. And yeah, that's when my bad attitude just kicked in and I said, fuck it, I gotta do it, man. It was, uh, and I think now when I look back on it, if I didn't do it when I did it, it wouldn't be done now. So I'm completely grateful. First track you heard, Lift Me Up by Mr. Freed in the Sample Universe created by the Slice of Heaven sample pack. Now you're listening to Francis the Mute and Brass.Beats. Really love these guys, great artists. So yeah, so uh, if anybody taps in, um, I haven't been drinking much beer these days. I'm trying to, you know, got a lot of shit to do, you know? I got parenting, um, I'm running like well, I'm not completely running. I'm running my label in the Sample Universe. I'm working at two or three other labels. Shout out to Freer. Um, and uh, yeah, man, I can't can't be fucked up, man. I can't be I can't be sleeping. So um, ah yeah. But tonight, this this show is not sponsored by. Edaringa, but man, I'd like to do some lo-fi beats for your brand. I really got a taste for these things when I was living in Berlin. And uh, here, this costs in uh, Amsterdam like two euros. In Berlin, you can get these bad boys for 70 cents. But yeah, that's what's good. So uh, Bentley, what's going on, Leon? You want to tap in and be the uh, first person I speak to tonight? Let me know, send a request. Until then, I'm just listening to the tracks and here I am. Gonna invite some people too. those horns them ooh that's so that man brass up beats can play ah commercials get out of here dial up and connect Okay, the third song that GVO released. This is a song called Refresh by uh, Damn Stargazers. And um, this, was, this song was created during our very first sample challenge, um, which was like the mountain of lo-fi, which is cloud core. So like when I started the sample universe, um, the idea was I would have a sampling, a platform that people could sample from. I would have a record label. I would have a publishing company. Um, the record label and publishing company were a lot harder to get started than the sampling company. 
Maybe that's because I was already working in sampling for a couple of years and had a, a lot of connections with artists. Um, I've been a freelancer over a track lip for a while. And um, when it became difficult to get my artist signed, I jumped and uh, just started my own thing. And that led to me getting some A&R work over at a pretty big lo-fi label and running a bunch of challenges. We did Cloud Chord, we did No Flick, we did Genesis, um, and a lot of songs were created in these things. We did the uh, Beatmaker's Blind Date, which was bananas. Um, and that was always the idea, kind of the idea of the sample universe was, and Good Vibes Only and the publishing company were creation, completion, releasing. A kind of a place you could come and you could get everything you need to do it properly. Um, I mean, there's so many dope platforms out there, but I don't know any platform that has where you can sample from, where you can release the music, where you can do your publishing, where you can do all that shit under one roof. I mean, I'm sure BandLab is working on it or, or doing it. And um, I mean, now I think unlimited sample licenses are like kind of the new hot thing, but the sample universe was on that two years ago. What was our slogan? No, re no license fees to release to DSPs. So, anyway, I'm not hating on them. A lot of these other companies doing these stuff, these people inspire me. So yeah, this is Dan Star Damn Stargazers. Uh, send me any messages if you wanna know about anything. Um, yeah, I didn't consider all the commercials that are gonna come up on this YouTube playlist, but who cares? Ah, yes, the fourth track we released, Sticks Bones, Night Waves. El Bentley knows Sticks Bones. We were blessed to have Sticks on the drums um, at the Die Jim Crow 10 year anniversary in New York City where Die Jim Crow metamorphosed to freer. And now, they're getting a little bit freer. I think so, I think so. What you think? Does everybody know the Freer record label? The first record label for formerly and currently incarcerated individuals. We're there to help amplify their stories, their messages, um, the trials, the tribulations, the successes, the failures, the whole thing, the good, bad, and the ugly, right? So, so yeah, Six Bones came through, he laced it. I was like, Phew. as the musical director on that gig, I feel like one of the most important things I did was hire him for the gig. Um, I'm glad that Freer, um, put the budget through, you know, because I think it, um, when I'm listening to the multi-track back, I'm like, whew, thank goodness, you know? Thank goodness I did that. Real Dean, what's good? Welcome to the one year anniversary of the Good Vibes Only record label, the sister company of the Sample Universe, you know? All started here, so now we're listening to Sticks Bones and his song, Night Waves. And I'm drinking some beer. If anybody wants to jump in, chop it up, send me a, send me a request. I mean, it's Friday night, isn't it? I don't feel like it's late. I just had a lot of shit to do today. I couldn't get it going earlier. Let's see, who do we got? A Lamborghini kopen, mooie Ferrari. Ah, more commercials. Okay, okay. 
IG is lagging the stream? Hmm. Probably. These guys don't like me. I'm sure I'm shadow banned all over the place. Okay, Truffle Shuffle by Sverban. This song was created during what challenge was this song created during? Ah, No Flick. No Flick. Yeah, this was the No Flick channel. So this is Sver Bear. He's an Amsterdam based artist. Um, yeah, he's a dope musician and I think his lo-fi superpower is he plays dope lo-fi drums live and then knows how to tweak them. So it sounds like uh, sounds like it was programmed. Love this track, love this track. <clears throat> yeah, so all these tracks are on your favorite DSPs. Um, we're in the process of setting up a page um, where you can download where you can download all the tracks if you want to support an artist directly by like buying a, a wave file. Yeah, Amsterdam has a lot of great musicians here. I mean, the Netherlands in particular. I think Amsterdam, Utrecht, and Eindhoven are hot spots for lo-fi. And a bunch of other places here. Um, but this is a, a lot of stuff. So, the fifth track released on the Good Vibes Only label comes from myself, my artist personality, Ghosts and Guitars, with Hoffy Beats. Um, this was a joy to work on this song. Um, I had written it a few months before um, I sent it to Hoffy, and I really wasn't thinking about, I think of him as like a bigger lo-fi artist and I wasn't thinking about like approaching him or anything with any, any stuff. But I've been watching these series of live songs he was doing and uh, at the end of one of them he said, hey, if anybody wants to collab, send me, uh, send me some uh, tracks. And I sent him three folders and he, uh, he picked this one. And yeah, it was good. Caught a couple editorial playlists. Um, it's still pumping out a lot of streams. And yeah, it was a great working experience, you know? So I'm glad Jonas was uh, open. I had done some work with him over at uh, the label, uh, you know, on the business end and as a and r a few tracks for him. But uh, it was really great to uh, work with him as a musician. I think he's a, a really talented young artist and producer. And if you know his lo-fi stuff, that's cool. But check out his solo piano work. Um, the Jonas Hoffman. Yeah, like really good, mellow, just, just piano stuff. Really like that. So yeah, that was a song called Leechy. That was number five. You know, it's funny. I was thinking, all right, for the anniversary, I'm really gonna do it up. Yeah, please check it out, Leechy. It's on uh, all things. You go to Ghosts and Guitars, go to uh, Hoppy Beats page. It's up there. So, yeah, I was thinking, I'm gonna blow it up, man. I'm gonna go crazy for this live. I'm gonna play every song the label put out. He put out 85 tunes. I'm not gonna play 85 tunes tonight. I'm gonna fall out in 20 minutes. Um, but I'm gonna give it a good shot and definitely do the, t the first 10 because I appreciate all these artists rocking with me so early on. So this one comes from Who Needs to Chill. Who Needs to Chill did a bunch of dope flips during some of our sample challenges, um, during the uh, Cooking with Craft Speed Challenge. Him and Jay Raven cooked up a beautiful tune called Morning Walk. Um, this song comes from the Slice of Heaven Challenge. 
he won that competition, so he won a SP404, and he won a release on the label. I'm not sure if we gave him money, too. I hope not. That was expensive. No, I'm only kidding. It wouldn't have mattered. Um, so this song comes from the Slice of Heaven pack, and that is when I took Bessix, Sphere Bear, Freddy Gums, Mr. Solo, Uncle Drumhausen, all to the Little Heaven Studios. One minute, let me get rid of this commercial. <laughs> Oh man, I should have hooked up the old computer that's got all this stuff, all these songs in a iTunes playlist. That's what happens when you switch computers. Okay, the next tune. So, our least by Who Needs to Chill was number six. I think this is number seven. This is Eric Deutsch, piano player for the Black Crows, Sverber, and. Once again, myself, Ghosts and Guitars, on uh, guitar and bass. Cool, I'm glad you like it, Dean. Um, shit, I don't have a link set up. But um, if you just go uh, go on the uh, go on the page up to the uh, the link in the bio, and you can uh, no, not yeah, the link tree. Hit our link tree. A Spotify and a YouTube playlist are in there with all this stuff. And if you make uh, if you make music, send us something, man. I swear I listen to every track. You know, I feel like if somebody takes the time to send me something, I can take two or three minutes to uh, listen to that tune. And the only time I don't listen to a song all the way through is it's really bad. You know, but I'd still try and get through it then. Yeah, so this is uh, Sver Bear, Eric Deutsch, Ghosts and Guitars. Oh, cool, man. I love Boom Bap. Um, I was working on some Boom Bap stuff today. So, yeah, you can catch uh, Eric Deutsch. Um, he's going to be... Uh, he's going to be touring with the Black Crows for the next few months, so... Um, whether you're a fan or not, man, he's ripping it on the keyboards. Man, how, how are you going to make lo-fi better, Dean? <laughs> Don't cook it too much, then it won't be lo-fi anymore. So anyway, cheers. As I said earlier to my friend Leon Bentley, um, not having much beer these days, but since we're, we're celebrating tonight, we're gonna try and get uh, an eatering endorsement to do some beats for these beer boys. They can pay me in beer as long as I'm allowed to resell it. Okay, cool. Send me the link. Drop it in my uh, DM. I'd love to hear it. I got you. Well, you know, we all have our beginnings. So, there's a lot of times there's, uh, there's, there's gems in those first uh, inspirations. I was talking to somebody about that recently. They they played this really beautiful uh, piece of music for me, and then they said, "Yeah, but I need to record it better." I was like, "Why do you need to record it better?" And they're like, "Well, it just doesn't doesn't sound good." And I said, "Well, be careful because this shit sounds great to me, and 
there's a difference between inspiration, like the first couple times you do something, inspiration and recreation. Some people call it demoitis. I know I've been a victim of it. Um, I'll give you a short story real quick. Many years ago, I was in a group and got a record deal, right? Small record deal on a company called Freeze Records out of New York City. These guys loved our fucking demo. I walked into the office with one of my homeboys and walked out with 10 G's, right? In cash. Five to go get a studio, five for the band, a thousand each, something like that, whatever it was. And we went in there, we redid our whole demo, and though it sounded fucking incredible, the, the original 8-track demo that we made in our little home studio killed it as far as energy and performances. It was just so, had so much more spont spontaneity and uh, inspiration. So that's my little, that's my little thing. All right, so we're heading, I think we're getting towards now, we're getting more towards the summer vibes. This one is from Damn Stargazers also. This is called Sway. And I love this one too. He created this during one of our challenges also. So that's been uh, great. And that's one thing I'm very happy about, like, if you have an idea, go for it, right? Because I remember telling um, a pretty, yeah, and look, look at that little brother down, look at that little brother album, it's fucking classic. Yeah, so inspiration versus recreation. Inspiration pretty much always wins. So you gotta be careful with like, Tweaking things forever and redoing and redoing. So, yeah. Dean, if you want to uh, talk more personally, <laughs> you can just send a request and I, I'll invite you into the video. Um, but if you like, if you don't like getting on the video, it's no problem. So yeah, damn stargazers. I love this one when they said this. So yeah, back to that. You you when you have an idea, just go for it, right? Because what's the worst thing that's gonna happen? All right, cool. Well, it was nice meeting you, and I'll look for your uh, track in the uh, DM. So yeah, I mean, just go for your ideas. Don't worry about it, right? Um, because you gotta take these steps. And sometimes the shit works out. Um, and and that's, how you, that's how you get your shit going, that's how you progress. You know, one love, Dean. I appreciate you being here. So. Give a fuck. Hey, Locust Street, what's good, bro? Mac Muffsword and Miss AC. Ah, commercials. Peace, bro. Ah, yeah. J Raven, Persimmons. Sweet. Okay, Locust Street, I'm bringing you. Can't seem to bring you in. Uh, I'm gonna invite you. Yo, I just invited you to join the uh, chat if you want to. Shit, I gotta get my headphones. I never set them up. 
Oh yeah. You gonna jump in? What's the deal? Yeah, so I'm just uh, chilling here, you know. I'm, I'm celebrating. Drinking a beer. One year, good vibes only in existence. Um, last year was a pretty monumental year for me as far as the uh, whole concept of uh, good vibes only, the sample. Man, it took a, it was a big push to get that shit done. Ah, you can't join the feed, man. Ah, you were going to be my first guest. But yeah, so that's, uh, that, that's it right now, you know? So the Sample Universe started it off about two years ago. I had the, I've had the idea for about five years. Um, but the first three years two years before the pandemic and just couldn't get it off the ground. Um, it basically flopped the first um, incarnation of Good Vibes Only. Then I didn't rebrand. I just said, you know what, let me do what I'm, I'm having good success with now is uh, a and r -ing and, and a and r -ing people onto sampling platforms. Um, so I built from there, and uh, it has attracted the attention of a lo-fi label, got me a gig, got me more tapped into the lo-fi scene. That's that. Should we try and get you to uh, join this session again, or you can't log in? Ah, you're off. a giver man wow we'll talk about failures well I wouldn't say it's a complete failure but this platform I was working for that I really thought was going to blow up I met Sibba Gibber through him I met Sticks Bones through him a bunch of other people that I still work with so things don't always work out the way they're planned and things can re, yeah, reincarnate later, and you would be like, no, how the hell did that happen? So um, don't write shit off too quick, even if it looks like it's a complete failure. Yo, appreciate it. I'm trying to get you into the live. So what you doing tonight? Just chilling? It's Friday night. You on the East Coast? What's good, Brandon? Locust Street. How you doing? I'm all right now that I got somebody to talk to. There you go. <laughs> over here drinking a bottle of wine nice i got me um uh, i'm trying to plug uh at a ringer and uh get some work with them this year oh nice <laughs> 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 
I think I'll, I'll put them in a live and keep showing myself showing that bottle. There you go. Get, get in it. Yeah. <laughs> so what's good? What's going on? Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice somewhat in person. For real. Yeah. For real in person. Yeah. <laughs> um, not much, man. Just chilling, dude. Been working quite a bit, but okay. As much music in as possible. Is this your full time job? Is this what you do? This is this is my eighty percent. Oh man, That's the dream man. That's the yeah. Well, okay. So, do you want me to give you the good news or the bad news? <laughs> What's the good news? The good news is it's it's possible. Yeah. The bad, the bad news is you got to wear a lot of hats. Yeah. And, and and you always get paid less than the hours you put in. I believe that. Because it's a, there, there's a lot of it is a labor of love. I believe, believe that. Um, I do it all. So. As a matter of fact, I pay to do it at this point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got work for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm just like, you know, I work a full-time job and just trying yeah. to do it on the side. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, did, I did that for years, too. I would say I would say during my musical journey, I've been a 75 percenter, 80 percenter most of the time and, and had between. I used to tour a lot. Um, yeah. So either working on the technical side or performing. Um, and when the tours weren't on, I would always have like some kind of little job on the side, yeah. you know, or for, for a long time, I was a professional busker between tours. There you so go. I, would, I would go, I would go from, you know, living on million dollar tour buses, um, you know, back to a little crummy apartment in Brooklyn and uh, being a busker. Hey, but I actually the bus busking, bus busking paid great. Yeah, to live in Brooklyn, even then, I'm sure, I don't know when it was, but even then, Brooklyn couldn't have been that cheap. Well, I mean, when I first moved to Brooklyn, it was dirt cheap, because I moved from Manhattan. So in the in the mid-90s, uh, I moved over to Brooklyn when it was still pretty uh, pretty rough and tumble. <laughs> in the 90s, hell yeah, bro. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it's pretty funny, is I was in a in a subway band with a kid for a while who's like now one of the biggest country artists out there really yeah and i remember the first time i saw this dude singing and he wasn't singing country i didn't know where the fucking country shit came from but <laughs> he wasn't what he pays. Is a, that's what pays boy <laughs> he, he is a texas dude but i remember i was on the other side of the platform with my partner and we had got off the train. We were playing on the trains and he was singing at the Metropolitan G train station on the other side. When we got off, we both stopped. We heard him. We were both like, man, this dude sounds fucking good. He just has like a very unique sounding voice. And um, yeah, we were in a, a, a group with him for a hot minute. And then he had a, a side project with my, uh, my partner. And then he just like disappeared. And the next time I fucking see him, he's like, I heard him on the radio. I was like, yo, that's Charlie Crockett right there. Right? Yeah. I, I, I said that to my wife. I was like, yo, that's Charlie singing. She's like, nah. She shazams him and boom. And then we look him up and he's like singing with Willie Nelson, like blown up fucking officially. You know? That's like awesome. talk show, talk show blown up. It's a lot of luck. It's a lot of luck. That kind yeah, of shit. Yeah, talent too, you know, and um, perseverance. Yeah, yeah perseverance. I, I would True. definitely say one thing I remember about him is that he knew he wanted to sing his tunes or tunes he was covering the way he wanted to sing them. Yep. Yeah. So, so you got every day too. Every day, you're right. Perseverance. That's 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 key, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yep, for brother. Yeah. So, did you send me a track for our spring cleaning compilation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I sent you that okay. sun drop track. Yeah, I love it. It's great. Thank you. 
Thank you. So what yeah. do you think? Um, I was thinking that I have about eight tracks now that yep. people have sent in. And usually they come in closer to the deadlines. Sure, March. Um, March 5th, I mean, it's a, it's a soft deadline. If, if I don't set any deadline, nothing mm -hmm. will come in. Right. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. So I have to be like March fifth. I might not take things anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> to light a fire under their ass, right? Yeah. Light a little fire. Um, but I, I I got a couple really nice ones. Um, I have a few collabs I'm working on with some people. But I was thinking like your tune could be like yeah, it might even be a good opening track. Or something Damn. right, right up, right up at the front of the record. I'll take. Yeah, because it's like, it's not really a dub track, but I think it has the right vibes. Yeah, it's a spring. It definitely wrote it for spring. You know what I mean? Like, I wrote it in the dead of winter, like next to the Christmas tree, and I was like, let me just think about spring because I fucking hate winter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, I'm so, I'm so over fucking winter. You know what I mean, and, dude? It's brutal. Yo. Brutal. I'm trying to I'm trying to move down to Portugal. Uh, I'd love to get out of some. I, I'm in Connecticut, right? I'd rather. Okay. It is awful here. <laughs> are you by Are you by um, Mystic? Uh yeah. So Matt, uh, you know, and yeah, because Matt's there. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. He's my best friend. We grew up together. We uh, basically have played music ever since we were like 14, 15 years old. Uh, we were in indie rock bands together, like multiple indie rock bands. And then we started listening to this, you know, we started listening to jam bands. We started listening to stuff like X Mag and Grammatic and like Boom Bap and, you know. And oh, then, damn, like, I like Grammatic. Yeah, stuff like that we really got into, you know, like we kind of just like started, you know, just followed trends together, whatever we were listening to. And, you know, we just been making music ever since forever, dude. So. Nice. Well, he told me, uh, he told me an interesting story that you guys have been playing so much, but you never released anything together. Yeah, I mean, well, we never, so we never released anything um, like this. Like when we were younger in high school and stuff, we released indie rock. Um, right. Okay. Band. Yeah, okay. we played out. You know, we played out a bunch. You know. All around Connecticut, Boston, New York, places, you know, okay. stuff like that. And, and um, yeah, with this stuff, um, we never really, you know, we kind of just jamming, you know, just having okay. fun jamming, never really thought it would, uh, you know, never, never really thought of putting stuff out like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I mean, I think this is the nice thing about lo fi is that you can, like, just create your music at home at your own pace and put it out. Yeah, I love, and, love it. I love and it. it's a it's it's a valid expression. Yes. You know? Yeah. It's it's definitely. Yeah. You can just um, I, like I never had any ambition to like do it until I was like, well, shoot, I got all these, you know, I got all these tracks, and I never really had like a a place to put them out, and then Matt kind of figured out like, you know, a little bit of like dabbled in the in in the industry. You know what I mean? He kind of shared that with me, like where he. You know, he started putting stuff out, and I was like, right, All right, right. I'll start doing it too. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, I, I, I see, I see. Uh, Matt, Matt is tapped in with uh, Ben Jam and yeah. Beats and the, yeah. and the real, yeah. and the real Jam Squad. And I mean, I know a bunch of those producers, and that's a, a dope fucking setup because Ben's a great dude. He's a great artist. So yeah, he's, he's gonna put there, a lot like, of he's gonna put a lot of passion into it. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. And we, you know, I was, I've been writing, you know, half the stuff that Matt put out before, like with, with them, I was writing with him on just like before I even started Locust Street, you know, I, I would just go to a thousand meet jam or whatever. And then he put out the beat. I didn't even like put my name up or anything. I jam it, you know, what I mean? um, before I had my own even spot or whatever. And then, right. uh, and then I, then I did my own and we did, one collab track so far we got another collab uh that's gonna come out soon um cool but we're done with it yeah for sure and i got and a couple so, more tracks down in the works so the 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 business side of me has has two questions for yeah. you. yeah your indie rock your indie rock bands where are those tapes 
<laughs> I have, you know, I have an indie rock band too that I did recently that we do have like full recordings of. We have like very rough recordings of old indie rock stuff from high school. We still do have it. Because um, you, you know that shit is, is hot in the sample. Just to sample. In the sampling. And just to sample. Yeah, people, people like like in the sample that shit. Yeah. Yeah, you know? and I mean, it's like totally. I mean, it was it was great. It was so much fun. I mean, we we had uh, you know we had prospects of of uh, people watching us from labels and stuff like that. And then we ended up going to college, <laughs> breaking up. Um, <laughs> I often wonder what would have happened if we didn't, you know, go our separate ways because it was a great band. And I have my right. own indie rock band that I told that that I that we'll probably set, um. We probably will drop an EP, in, you know, in a, you know, sooner rather than later. The the songs are almost done. I'm still playing it. You know what I mean? Okay, um, cool. Yeah, this one. It's well, called I'd, I'd, the I'd good love gray. To hear it. Yeah, it's called the, the good, good gray. gray. Yeah, I'll send you a couple, couple tracks. I have I have them. You know, they're not yeah. fully fully done done, but I'll, I'll I'll send them to you. Okay, here's my other business question for mm -hmm. you too. Mm -hmm. um, have you handled have you taken care of getting your pro and all that stuff set up yeah yeah so we we did that um we started working on that stuff with uh when we did the track mystic we with did, mystic okay yeah, yeah i'm just yeah, i'm yeah, following yeah. up i'm dealing with like 200 people. You, i'm sure you got a lot of people on your on yeah your i'm like <laughs> yeah my my put my, my you know my partner He's pinging me every day on Slack. He's like, you need to look at this. You need to look at this. I'm like, dude, He's my strong point is A&R. You're the fucking data gorilla. You look at that. If I sent all the things in there, <laughs> take, take a look. But I do. I have to like, you know, it's hands on. I'm very fortunate. I got um you got a business mind, bro. I don't, I'm like, I'm I like. Have a, I have a semi-business mind, Locust Street. I'm, I'm an artist, but by default, I've been pushed into a lot of the business stuff because I feel yeah, like, I, I, I feel like I've been a good enough artist to be able to go into the room with other good artists and then had enough business sense to hang out with the business people. Yeah. Yeah, and right, to make so, money. And if your dream is to make money off it, man, you ha you got to do it. You, you know, to live off of it, you yeah, got to do it. I'm, I mean, my dream isn't really to make money. My dream has always been to make great art and travel. And to, right? But you got to live, right? Unfortunately. Yes, yeah. No, <laughs> is that, is that a, no, I mean, yeah, I, listen, I got the reality. I, I got it's, two kids. I got two kids and every yeah. other word out of their mouth is, Papa, I'm hungry. I want this. I want that. <laughs> no, the, the, yeah. Fortunately, I've trained them not to want things. They only like secondhand stuff. But I can't stop them from eating. And food is fucking expensive. Especially right now. now, bro. bro. Yeah. Bro. Whoa. <laughs> it's bad, holy, dude. Holy shit. It's bad, dude. Man, yo, I saw a, I saw a commercial the other day. Not a commercial, but like, a, like one of these meme spoof videos of a woman going to a checkout at like a Costco mm -hmm. and the, and the cashier was treating her, the woman like it was a trauma center because she's like about to have a heart attack every time he scans a grocery item. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It, it, it is bad. It is terrible, man. I, I don't know how, I don't know how people get by. I mean, I do well, you know, I do pretty well. I mean, I'm, I'm a nurse actually okay <laughs> and that's my full-time job great and then uh but like you know so i do okay like as far as money goes and i'm still like man the freaking groceries is terrible <laughs> yeah Every, it's, gas it's, groceries my god it's frightening well i mean i live in amsterdam now so i don't have a car i mean i've never had a car but i don't have a car and don't even need it here yeah that's you awesome know? so I bike, I bike 90% of the places and the other, the other 10% is uh, public transportation. That sounds um, great. I'm sure it's a beautiful, a beautiful place to live. Yeah, it's been, it's been raining. It's been raining. It's been raining for months. For months? You know? Yeah, months. 
Like, <laughs> seriously, for when I say months, I've lost count of it. Like, it hasn't rained like I've been here for ten years. It hasn't rained like this in nine years. On one second. This is my fiance, Megan. Hi. Hey, Megan. How you doing? <laughs> This is my dog. Check him out. Miles. Hey, I love dogs, but I'm a cat person now. You are? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, man, I ain't walking the dog in this fucking rain. Oh, it's bad. <laughs> it's walking the dog is a pain in the ass, dude. It's like, wow. you know, 10 degrees, 10 degrees here in the, you know, in the morning. Nice. It's bad. Yeah, so, so yeah, you know, I mean, there's things I love about Amsterdam. I mean, for me, with young kids, is there's no guns here. None, huh? Right? And the people that have guns are such huge criminals, they're only shooting each other. Right? So there's nobody coming into school. Not the United States, fucking, right? Yeah, it's just like, I couldn't deal with that. I talked to my cousin. I'm like, I don't know how you send your, your kids to school. She's like, well, I just bought bulletproof backpacks. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, That's don't terrible. you see the about. fucking problem with that? Yeah. Yeah, like, it, it is a problem here. We we are. Uh, yeah, so I don't miss. I don't miss. I don't miss that. Yeah, it's definitely a scary time here. I mean, I hope things change. As far as I, I don't think they will. It's just going to get worse. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's how I feel. Yeah, and I think you had the best idea getting the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it's not. It's not perfect here. I mean, we we have our version of Trump over here, and and uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot. Of, there's the a lot of that. There's a lot of fascism here, so. Um, but these crazy people aren't armed. Yeah. So yeah. that really makes a big fucking that helps. difference to me. Like, <laughs> yeah, because after I was here about five years, I started realizing I was like, I've been, I've been so. I, I think everybody in America has PTSD from the level of violence. Yeah. We just don't even realize it because you grow up in it. Yeah. Like when you, yeah. Sometimes I, I do catch myself thinking like I'm in the grocery store. What if somebody just opened the fire? You know, sometimes I think about it and it, it's, it's tough. Even in, in the hospital, you know, when I, you know, at work in the hospital, I, I'm, I'm in the ICU. I see people all the time dying and I'm just like, you know, I see gunshot wounds all the time. Mm. Uh, um, oh. Yeah. Yeah. And then even people come in, coming into the hospital that want to get violent, you know what I mean? Because it does happen, you know, mm -hmm. emotion charge people, crazy people yep. come to the hospital and they'll, you know, Finan get. financial problems, pressure. Yeah. Somebody's yeah. dying, their mom's dying, they, they lose their mind, you know, mm -hmm. so I've seen violence. Nobody's coming with a gun yet, but people get, people get wacky. For sure, I work in New Haven, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, New Haven, Connecticut is gun gun wave in New Haven. <laughs> <laughs> well, is it isn't like uh, isn't Bridgeport like Bridge fucking super Port. deadly too? Yeah, Bridgeport, and that's right there, man. Like right, that's that's like 50, 10, 15 minutes from New Haven. That whole area, Southern Connecticut, you know, uh, it's tough. Bridgeport, New Haven. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, you don't think of Connecticut as like tough, you know, is like the hood, but the wealth inequality in Connecticut is insane. You know, right, well, you Greenwich, it's always Greenwich. You know what I mean? You got like Fairfield and like Stamford right next to New York City. You got like the richest people in the world. Then you got Bridgeport, New Haven, Hartford, like just just the poorest you know the Des the destitute the destitute yeah and, and the most violent place so it's violent you know so yeah it is crazy kind of place to live in connecticut but um yeah man so yeah i mean so that i appreciate that about europe i mean one thing i'm struggling with now is that um i'm eligible for citizenship over mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. um but the, the language is difficult. I I wonder, like, how do you uh, how do you get by? There are a lot of, but I would imagine a lot of people don't speak. A lot of people speak English there because I feel like yeah. I mean, in Amsterdam and in the Netherlands in particular, is the highest level of English in in Europe. Yeah, but you go if you go to um, Spain or Italy, like there'll be nobody 
speaks fucking English. Younger kids speak English because they're watching YouTube. TV, YouTube, yeah. But okay. like, if you, you start, you, you know, people over thirty don't yeah. speak fucking English. You know. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's. I'm sure that's definitely the language barrier is tough. I, I, yeah, I can't imagine just immersing myself in just yeah. another culture. Just, yeah, and um, my big problem, my my big problem here is, um, my wife speaks a dialect mm-hmm. that's like mm-hmm. kind of, kind of Dutch but more German, and my kids speak English, Dutch, and this dialect. Okay, so I- it's like. It's you got like scram- it's scram- you got a bunch of languages fucking- flying around you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, our our house language is a mess. Yeah, <laughs> more more for me. Everybody else has it mastered. That's tough, but cool. <laughs> that's tough, but that's yeah. neat. You know what I mean? I feel like yeah. that's that's interesting. That's yeah. That well, when I when I, when, when I try and speak more Dutch, like with my kids and stuff, my daughter is more helpful. My son is just like Papa. The Netherlands is schlecht. He's like, let's just speak English. And he's like, he's, he's, and that's what Dutch people do. They hear you with a bad accent, and they instantly switch, switch Flip to it. English. English. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's, that's okay. like, that. that's problematic, you know, because you just get used to it. You know, you, you learn a couple lines to, like, make them feel like you tried, and then they instantly switch to English. You don't have to. <laughs> you have to it's not forcing you to learn the language. No, but now I have to take this language test. Oh, for a citizen. Yeah, and about two years ago, I could have passed with my level now, but last year they raised it and made it way harder. You mm. know? So, That's but uh, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying studying. You know, I'm getting my Rosetta Stone on, and like when there I go, go out of, the, when I go out of the house, I've made it a point that like if I'm in the store or interacting with anybody on the street, um, I'm only speaking Dutch, that's, right? That's like to, to, to force myself. That's great. But I still have the problem when people hear my accent, they'll switch to English and I have to be like, no, no, please. Ich moet ufene and prober. You know, I'm telling them I must try and I need to practice. That's great. I got a little bit of Spanish. I talked to a lot, a lot of my patients are Spanish, you know, Spanish speaking. Okay. So I, I got, you know, I got enough of, you know, to assess them, and check them out, and make sure they're okay. You know what I mean, stuff like that. But being bilingual would be would be something else. Man, that's great. One thing I notice is, whenever I'm studying, it definitely triggers creativity. I bet. I know. I study too. I'm in school too. I'm, I'm doing psych. My psych APRN. So I'm doing okay. psychiatry. Nurse mm. practitioner. Interesting. Well, I mean, an artist I've been releasing a lot, who has a full length that we're in the about halfway through dropping his singles, mm. Bayfi, out of um, his name's Rodrigo. He's from uh, San Paulo, Brazil. Yep. I was getting to know him and I'm like, you know, so what are you doing besides making music? He's like, well, I make music when I'm on my breaks. And I was like, okay, what do you do? What's your breaks? He's like, I'm a neurosurgeon in an in a ER <laughs> trauma. And wow. He's like, I, I, I need something to calm me down. Yeah. He's like, I discovered, I discovered Lo-Fi and the Koala app. Yeah. So I just keep, keep my iPad and I'm making beats between trauma yeah yeah oh. i get, get it i feel the same way man the icu is like unforgiving uh, you know it's time and uh i, I get that. that's how i feel i, I, I get him I that. <laughs> yeah that's great hey give me one give me one second i'm gonna go grab another beer i'll be right back all right and right now you're listening to Bessics with corn waffles <laughs> you just joined, Megan. <laughs> and right now, if you
if you buy an Edderinger, you can get a free download of corn waffles by Bessix and Fonzie. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Put out the put out the uh, ad. For that. Exactly. Oh boy, man! You know, I kind of got to get going. All it's right. Well, listen. I'm glad you. I'm glad you tapped in. Like and uh, I see. Bro. I, I got a couple other people in the feed. Yeah. Danny Ghost, who's another uh, label owner, so maybe I can get him to come in. But, but listen, thanks a lot for tapping in with me. And um, it was nice to meet you uh, officially. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I'm good with email conversations, but I, I do like to be a little more personal. Yeah, man. You know, and so, uh, uh, looking forward well, to working with you in the future for sure. Yeah, well, you you got you definitely got a spot on the um, you got a spot on the. Uh, the uh, spring cleaning comp for sure. Thank you so much. And yeah, so uh, yeah, go about, do your thing, be safe, and uh, we'll catch up. You know, you know where I'm at. All right, man. Good luck. All right. Bye. Thanks. Appreciate it. One love. Bye. Free, free beat. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Freed beat. What's going on, brother? Uh huh. Download Google Chrome with your smartphone. I didn't plan for all these uh, YouTube commercials. Oh, right. I want, yes, Mr. Freed, Pete's coming in. Did you, did they let you in? Freed, Beat trying to get you in. Yo, Freed, Beat. Hi. <laughs> What's going on, brother? Cool, what? cool. Everything is cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm, gl I'm glad you tapped in. Yeah, uh... I was, I was just, uh, I was just talking to uh, another artist, Locust Street, who sent in a really nice track for the uh, spring cleaning comp. So, um, yeah, it's happening. I got about eight tracks sitting in the, uh, in the submission folder. It's, it's looking good. My goal was to have around twenty. But, yeah. Uh, I take, then, I'll, uh, I'll, t I'll take whatever people send in. Okay. It's, it, it's a little more relaxed. I'm not too strict with the, uh, with the rules. I'm not too hardcore. Like it's gotta be this, you know? It's, it's the, the first time you, uh, I speak French, huh? so, uh, I'm not uh, very comfortable with, uh, English, but, uh, Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. It, my, cool. my, my French is terrible. <laughs> No, my uh, my English is uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, for for this um, compilation, it's the first time you you will uh, do this type of uh, of, of beat uh, like uh, dub reggae style. Uh, because um, um well, no, uh, I mean, well, for a comp, yes. Like so, I've been releasing dub reggae lo-fi beats. Okay. For the last for the last couple of years, and um, that's like in lo-fi. That's my my personal favorite genre. Yeah. Um, I tried to get the last label I worked at to do that, and they were like, they were just they didn't think it was a bad idea, but they were like, uh, we think you got lucky with your reggae lo-fi tunes being like somewhat successful. So now it's my own label i'm like well this is what i love so why wouldn't i do this yes. and uh yeah but, but yeah it's a good challenge for for me it was a good challenge because uh usually uh i, I really love this type of music i really love uh, reggae and uh, uh roots roots reggae and uh more uh modern reggae too but um uh, I never uh, uh, did, did, did this type of beat uh, uh, before, so it was my it was my first time, my first try. Uh, I see the the, the the challenge for the for the for the competition, and uh, it turns good. And uh, the second one uh, turns uh, okay too. Uh, yes. Um, and, uh, I think they I'm both. Very, I think they both sound great. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. after that, I was uh, uh, 
wondering if I will do uh, more of this type of beat uh, because I really love this type of music. And uh, yeah, so right, right about now, I, I'm just about uh, trying to flip the last um, uh, sample challenge, uh, the, the, the 16 uh, sample challenge. But, okay. Uh, I I don't know. Uh, I don't know if uh, it's gonna be good, but uh, if it's okay, I'm gonna post it. But uh, yeah, sometime uh, we try, and uh, it's not what we we expected at the beginning. But uh, sometime uh, after a couple of days, uh, sometime uh, I can fix some some uh, some something in uh, the beat, and uh, I. Uh, some sometime uh, it, it, it come out uh, pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Okay, I and can also. Um, I know for challenge sixteen, I specifically limited the stems, but uh, if you maybe need some more inspiration, I can send you a few other stems. Okay. Uh, uh, no, I, that, I I took the the bass line and uh, uh, the guitar, and I'm trying to do something more more uh, hip hop, more uh, yeah. But uh, we'll we'll see. And, All right. Uh, well, let me know. <laughs> and uh, what what uh, what is your uh, story? So you 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 just to told me that you. Um, you was uh, for another label, and this this is the first year anniversary. And yeah, you you um, you, you work you you uh, work together with uh, the Simple Universe. So what is the, the, the story? The, the, yeah. I'm gonna give you the whole story. The Sample Universe is my company. Okay, that's where everything started. Okay. Um, so I'm going to spin back a little bit further. I'm going to go back about five years and give you the, the short story. Five years ago, I launched Good Vibes Only label, and it completely failed. Okay. Right? What's, what, I, could, what's I, I, I just couldn't get it off the ground. I was doing ska and lo-fi, but like kind of separately. Okay. Right? I couldn't get it off the ground. As when things were like in a really downturn and I had to say, well, I, I can't get this idea off the ground. Then like out of nowhere, I got offered um, a freelance job with Tracklib, which is a big sampling company. Yeah. yeah. And the job I got offered was to A&R artists onto the platform. Okay, right? for uh, Tracklib. Yeah. Okay. So I've signed about I've signed about sixty artists to track live, um, and right around the time that the pandemic hit, um, it became impossible to get artists on to track live. And I had all these artists that I had been speaking to, who were like, "What am I going on track live? What am I going on track live?" And I'm like. I can't get you on now. There's just like such a backlog because all the bigger artists um, who wanted, didn't want to be on track with when they were employed were now unemployed because of the pandemic and they all wanted to go on the track list. So I said, you know what? Screw it. I had this idea about starting a sampling company. So I just started it. And a lot of those artists gave me songs to start my company with. Okay. So within one month of launching the sample universe, a lo-fi, a pretty big lo-fi label came to me and said, listen, we like what you're doing. We want you to run sample challenges for our label. And the first artist I did was Cloudcore. Um, and then it kind of went from there. And then they gave me a job and I still had the sample universe going, but it wasn't my main focus. Now my main focus became A&R in the lo-fi world. Okay. So during, during that time, 
uh, because the label was pretty big. I had, I had been speaking before I started working at the label with a bunch of artists and one artist in particular, an artist named Imp, um, I just, I'm, I was following him through track with beat battles he was doing and I just started sending him tracks, right? Because I wanted to do a song with him and he kept rejecting me, rejecting me, rejecting me. At least he turned down at least a hundred tracks. Okay. Right. Or a hundred ideas I sent him. And then one day he says, Hey, you know, all my, my sessions for the next two weeks got canceled. If you have anything, send it to me. I said, okay. I had three folders of sample sample packs I had been working on. I sent them to him. He picked this one tune that was kind of like a dub reggae track. Okay. And we did it. And it fucking sounded great. I was like, wow. It's not ska and lo-fi, but it's like it kind of the, the earlier idea I had from years mer kind of merged. Right? And I was like, and then the tune boomed. You know, it caught a lot of big editorial playlists. And um, I was like, all right, cool. So we did a couple more of them. And they haven't been as successful, but like, they're not the type of songs that are, uh, they're not just sitting there. Like they're, they're steadily growing and growing, you know? So I'm like, well, this is what I really love. I, I, I want to do more of this. So when I started the Sample Universe, I had an idea. The idea was creation, have a company where artists can come and get samples right mm -hmm. or, or whatever they need for inspiration completion to help you complete whatever your idea is and then release it right so that was the overarching strategy business strategy creation completion release it release it so i knew i needed the sample company i needed the record label to release tracks and I needed a publishing company to help people set up their business properly. So that's that's basically the, the short version of the whole story. I mean, there's a lot of behind the, the scenes stuff. The easiest part to get done was setting up the sampling company. Yeah. Because it, it just took me to sit behind the computer, make the website yeah. and upload the yeah. tracks and stuff. Yeah. Getting, getting good distro for a record label. Like I didn't want to be like one of these lo-fi record label that's like releasing your kids through the releasing your tracks through the distro kid account. Okay. I wanted to have a, I wanted to have a real distribution partner. So I in lo-fi and beat culture. I mean, the pinnacle is downtown music, you know, and that's who I eventually got. But you know, they rejected me four times mm -hmm. until i until i had a little bit of success with a couple tracks um re released through sample challenges <laughs> okay <laughs> it was my uh, it was my girl um, yeah okay so you so you 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 have a, a pretty good uh, background in uh, in the music uh, in industry so, yeah, well, I've, been, I've been working in the music industry for 20 years. I was a Give me just artist. one second, please. Give me just one yeah. second. Oh, man, while we're on that break, we're listening to uh, Rock Away All Day by Dan. No. By spirits, rock away all day by spirits. I also said today for the anniversary I was going to play every song we release, but I don't think I'm going to get that yeah. far. But I'm doing a lot better. <laughs> I'm doing better than I thought. Now I think uh, we're up to we're up to like thirty. So I'm happy I got this far. Ah, yeah, the headphones make a the headphones make a big deal. It always sounds better. Oh, 
Oh yeah, there you are. You're back. Um, your phone's working. This. Yeah. Do you hear me? Right. Yep, okay. Yep. Very and, good. Um, okay. Let me just uh, try to put this somewhere. And, and uh, yeah, the la last last week, and and I grab a beer. Um, nice. <laughs> Last um, yeah, <laughs> last week you um, you released a track from a, a guy from um, from Montreal, I guess. Um, trick, tricky, tricky beats, tricky beats, tricky, snow snow tricky. day, trick yeah, trick beats, snow yeah, snow day, beats, snow day, yeah. Yeah, yeah he nice re reached me on uh, on Instagram. Uh, yeah, I I think he he. He's uh, uh, in Montreal, uh, near near from Montreal, uh, but uh, I I didn't uh, know know him. But uh, yeah, uh, so so you have uh, artists from um, everywhere, all over, all, all over the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. All over. It's a beautiful thing about the internet. Yeah. Um, and I think too, um, lo-fi and beat culture is very, um, very international and communicating with each other. Yeah. I never, I never met Trekkie Beats. I know his partner on the track, Lo-Fi Alumni. Okay. You, ne you never spoke to, to him. You never, uh, have, have a chat with, with him, uh. I spoke to him a little bit after Lo-Fi alumni asked me to release the song because originally they had a different um, label doing it, and they screwed okay. up. They screwed up the release. Okay. So they asked me if I could get it out in a certain time frame. Okay. And I was able to do it. So. I do a bunch of work with Lo-Fi alumni. Um, I think that he is a really cool artist, but this is a guy that if he keeps if he keeps doing what he's doing, he's gonna reinvent a business idea. Okay. Because he's he has a he has a business sense about him. Okay. So he like really schooled me a little bit on um, organic playlists. Like so coming from a bigger, working at a bigger label for two years, they're not even focused, bigger labels are not even, they don't even care about organic playlists. It's all about the editorial playlists. Okay, right, what, so for song, what is the difference? Uh, I, I don't know the... Okay, the, well, the, an edi an, an, like an editorial playlist on Apple Music or Spotify are playlists that the platforms are making. Okay, yeah. Right, so when you if you go listen to Jazz Vibes or Lo-Fi Beats on Spotify, Spotify curates that playlist. Mm -hmm. so, na so naturally, they promote that playlist and it has millions of people listening to mm -hmm. it. So that's where you want your song to go because if you get a song on Jazz Vibes or Lo-Fi Beats, it's like a million or half a million plays almost guaranteed. And on the business end, that translates into about 1500 to 5000 dollars or euros depending how the stream is counted right so okay. it's it's money yeah so the bigger labels are, are really focused on that now when i first met lo-fi alumni he was telling me a lot about his or and i had just started and opened up my label right but i'm still mm -hmm. thinking like i'm working for the bigger label and he was saying, no, but these little organic playlists, they can get you a lot of plays. And I was like, yeah, but nothing really to move the needle. But I could see that he had a point, right? Like, okay, if you're a small artist and you get 50 or 100,000 plays, that's pretty good. But what I noticed right away is that 
the organic playlists will get you actual real followers who will become fans and keep listening to your music. Okay. And the editorial playlists, nobody knows who mm -hmm. you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they. And I was like, they just listen to music. They don't. They 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 don't have any. Uh, they they don't pay attention to the artists or. They have no idea who the artist is. Yeah. Okay, I got right? you. Because I've been I've been on many big editorial playlists, and they have got me no fans. Okay. Right. So, so I'm watching some of these guys who are really working these organic playlists, and usually the organic, the good organic playlists are curated by other beat makers and artists. Right. Okay. So, um, yeah. So you know, you can always learn something, and um, I see he's working on some things, and I, I'm like, wow, man, this. If I had a little more money. I would hire this dude. <laughs> <laughs> and and what is your 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 plan for the for the for the next year? Or uh, do you do you have any yeah. plan? Or uh, I do. It's, I, I, or, or it's no, organic. Just just yeah. No, no. It's definitely. I had a plan from the get go. My original plan was to have the sampling company to have the label, to have the publishing company. Okay. All those things are established now, right? Um, as of today, we've released 80 tracks. Um, we've helped about 60 artists do their publishing. And so along with the publishing, because through my partner, I can now pitch their songs to like TV shows and stuff like I can't I don't randomly go and say hey I'm gonna I'm showing you my music for a TV show what happens is is through the publisher I get briefs right so a TV show let's say it's called uh, Love Island this was something recently they send a brief to the publisher And the publisher sends out this brief to all the little sub publishers, right? I'm a sub publisher, mm -hmm. right, of a bigger company. And they say, hey, we're looking for a song. Uh, it might be background music. It could be instrumental. It could be vocal. It, it could be a hip hop beat, something inspirational, right? So they give you a description. And what I do is when my partner sends me the brief, I go through my catalog um, and I say, okay, I think these 10 songs might work. Okay. You know, so that's a, that's a pretty, that's a pretty important thing for like trying to get the label and artists paid. Um, but I think more the plan now for, 2024 is to do a couple compilations like the dub one is the first one okay then i want to do one in the fall like kind of around the fall theme but um is for me more the goal for 2024 is to streamline the process like sort of work smarter not harder and create more um, opportunities for the catalog and the artists, okay. right? And when I say catalog, I mean everybody that's on the label. Because as the label owner, I have to look at all the artists sometimes as a, a whole body of music, right? So I have, I have a couple companies I'm talking to who are like, um, They need 80 lo-fi tracks to be in their service, right? They have no lo-fi. People, are, their clients are asking them for lo-fi, right? So I'm talking to a company about that. Okay. So, th so these type of things, like on the label as the business, this is more of the business side. Yeah. Uh, right. So you you want to uh, release more compilation? Right now you you have released 
uh, only uh, sing singles, right? Uh, no, or no, any EP no. I've or done, I've done uh, I've done uh, two, one, two, three full. I have three full length projects. Um, the first EP, seven song EP, I did was for a group called Bessex and Fonzie. So usually how these projects works is we release all the songs as singles because we're trying to get the editorial playlists. Okay. And then at the end, at the last song, we re-release everything again together as an EP so that when it's on your Spotify or your Apple channel, if somebody goes on there and listens to it, it will play the whole EP. If you just release singles, a lot of times what happens is somebody comes on your page and listens to the single, but once the single is over, the service, Spotify, Apple, Deezer, whoever, they suggest a new artist. Yes. So they call this this strategy waterfall releases. Yeah, it's the new it's a new thing. Yeah. The, the, it's, a, the, it's, a, it's a couple of years old now, but it, it works. Yeah, it, it works. It's a it, it's a good strategy in the in this ecosystem. So we did Bessex and Fonzie. I'm in the middle of doing one now for an artist named Bayfi. Um, and what he did is he flipped 10 songs from an artist I represent from her new record. Right, we gave him the, the whole record exclusively just for him. Okay, uh, he, an artist that you have on uh, the sample universe? universe. Yeah. Okay. She released a record. A rec uh, okay. She released a, a, a brand new full length record, and I put it. I have another label that does vocal music. Okay. Uh, called, called Trade Secrets, and this, but this is through the publisher, so I run the label for the publisher. Um, and we re released a record through there, but we gave her, we gave the stems to this artist Bayfi, mm -hmm. and we let him pick whatever he wanted for 10 songs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're releasing singles and then at the end, we'll put together the whole album. Okay. And then I have one more coming right after that by an artist named uh, Siba Gibba. Um, he's out of Brooklyn. And he's, he's a low key legend. He wrote a couple of songs on uh, Everlast, the big Everlast record, Whitey Ford Sings the Blues. Oh, okay. And um, yeah, he's a dope producer. I knew him from uh, working at a different platform. Um, and uh, yeah, so we have the same thing happening. We released about 10 singles for him. And now we're getting ready to wrap the whole thing up into one full length. Okay. Do you have uh, any plan about uh, physical... Um uh physical uh, but on, on vinyl or on, yeah uh, yeah yeah we've Do you done have some, any plan I've about done, that i've done some vinyls um but like one-offs i have a company i work with out of uh ireland called phono cats okay. and sometimes i'll make one or ten with them i mean unless an artist really has a, a fan base investing in vinyl yeah. is not yeah. <laughs> you know, you they're gonna wind up sitting in your closet. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I got I got a hundred of my own records I couldn't sell. I was lucky I sold the first hundred. <laughs> I was lucky I sold the first hundred. <laughs> you know, but yeah. I only play one record, one of my own records. My kids only play one record. The other hundred, <laughs> I'm still trying to get rid of. <laughs> okay. um, but no, I'm thinking about making. Okay. Um, I'm thinking that. My friend, my friend Miami is gonna kill me if she ever hears this. Uh, if if she ever hears this live stream, because uh, I gave her such a hard time about eight years ago when we were on a tour because she was selling cassettes. But cassettes are very popular right now. So yeah, been, and it's much cheaper. Yeah. So I was. Yeah, thinking, I mean, you can see what I got right behind me. I got a bunch of analog stuff. Yeah. So, so I'm thinking about. <laughs> doing a, a label cassette you know and just um, yeah I don't even I'm not even thinking about selling them really I'm thinking about just doing a whole run of cassettes and just sending them out to people 
you know, all the artists. Yeah, there you go. See? Yeah, this is my setup. So, yeah, yeah. Looking, yeah, looking of good, looking good. Uh, uh, nice. <sighs> Not too much so, light. So, so let me ask you a question. What is your background? Yeah. Because one thing, one thing I noticed very quickly um, is that your productions are very crisp and, and sound. Yeah, sound very professional. So. Yeah, oh, thank you. Um, uh, my background. But first of all, uh, I'm 44 years old, so uh, I, I, I'm not not a. Uh, a young, a young, uh, a young uh, guy, a young artist. Uh, I have a background, but um, I take a, a long break. So, um, in uh, at the end of the uh, of the nineties, uh, I had a, a, a group, a hip hop group, here uh, in uh, Quebec. And uh, so I was um, I was pretty uh, active between uh, 1998 and uh, 2003, and uh, so uh, we we. We decide to uh, not continue with uh, with with our group, uh, and I found uh, and I I I, um, I have kids and uh, and all and all that, uh, and um, I try to uh, I try to produce uh, by myself uh, a, a solo album because I. I was uh, rap rapping, so I was uh, a rap artist and not just a beat maker. But uh, and uh, so it was uh, between 2010 and 2013. But uh, it uh, it happens uh, so, so, some some things uh, in my life, and uh, I, I I was not able to continue this. So between 2013 and 2020, I was pretty uh, inactive. Uh, I was not I was not active, but uh, during the pandemic uh, 2020, I, de uh, I decided to um, to to, uh, to to start uh, to restart uh, doing beats and. Uh, Go, uh, and I decided to um, uh, to uh, master uh, uh, to to master the the, the, the sampling uh, uh, the 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 art of the sampling, and I decided to to buy an MPC. Uh, nice, because I. I was working on a on a MPC 2000 XL at uh, at the beginning of, of the of of all, all this story and uh, yeah so um, I have a, a small uh, MPC one and it's very it's very nice for my for for my needs and uh, um, yeah so um, the first three years. Uh, uh, I work a lot, try to get better, and uh, um, I start a YouTube channel and a SoundCloud. But uh, it, it, I'm not very popular with with this new channel. And don't, I don't 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 feel bad. Yeah. It's a job. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the the all all the social uh, media aspect and the marketing it's not it's not my thing i, I have on on my on a professional side i have a background in in sale and all that but i just want to make music so <laughs> yeah, yeah um and uh yes yeah, so uh i release a couple of things and i and i decide to um, to take all my my best work 
um, at the end of the last year and uh, opened a, a Bandcamp account. And, uh, and I released uh, uh, like, an, uh, like a beat tape on uh, Bandcamp. It's, it's, it's good, it's cool, it's my old stuff, but uh, I, I reworked work all the, the the master and all that and uh yeah i'm pretty uh, um, proud of this but uh right now i'm between two uh two two jobs uh, um i'm gonna start a new job uh not uh, next week but uh, in two in but in in one week i'm going to um to uh, so so I'm I'm pro professionally in my uh, in my uh, career uh, I'm between two job right now and I had seven weeks uh, of free time and I decide to use it to uh, to to get better um, uh, uh, to, to teach myself about mixing and mastering and all that, uh, uh, buy a new computer, uh, uh, be, because I was doing all my music dollless, so without uh, a dog, uh, without a computer, so everything was exporting from the MPC, but now I. Uh, I, I do a pre-master on the MPC and I finish in, a, in Ableton and uh, with some plugins, uh, it's more easy to, to, uh, to, uh, to, to adjust to some uh, and, and just, just, uh, uh, just pumping the, the sound during the master uh, uh, using the compressor, the limiter and all that. So, um, right, right. And, and just mastering at... Uh, L L U F S. So uh, yeah. I don't. I I I, I didn't know was uh, what was uh, L U F S. So uh, it was new. So I so I see in the the all all the submission. Uh, so uh, minus fourteen L U F S. What what the hell is L U F S? And uh, but so, you know, uh, can I comment on that? Yeah. Like, the whole thing with the luffs is like, okay, I see a lot of people say, oh, you need to do it like this, this, this. And then I see a lot of producers I really respect say, that doesn't matter at all because when you submit it to the DSP, like Spotify, Apple, or whoever, they have, they limit it right then. Yeah. They, they turn your master to that. Yeah. You know, so I, I hear some producers saying that, by doing everything by the the loudness full scale, you're yeah you're kind of squashing your uh, the dynamics of your mixes. I I don't know. Yeah, but um, now I have a LUFS a lot uh, right uh, monitoring, so yeah. I can so I export uh, my mix lower and I give me more room in Ableton to uh, um, to to apply a limiter and make sure that but, but I, I have um, uh, uh, many things to uh, to 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 learn uh, this is I have all I have all to learn but I really love uh, doing music I really love to flip sample uh, I'm trying to learn uh, how, how to play keys uh, and uh, and uh, I, I I don't do, do this for for the for the money I, I don't do this for for living for sure but uh, um, I want to be uh, uh, to 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 be a, a part of a commu uh, community and uh, and talk about uh, and, and talk with other people uh, doing the, 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 the same stuff and, uh, and yeah then I love well, I love lo-fi I love boom bap uh, I, I have a pretty not the large uh, spectrum but uh, 
Yeah, so I uh, well, do you know? Um, I need to to find my 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 color and and my yeah. flavor about uh, with all. Uh, well, your 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 production sound great. That's yeah. for sure. I mean, that, that shit comes booming out of my speakers. <laughs> um, but you yeah. know, like when mm. you said, like lo-fi and uh, and boom bap, these are like nice communities that are like really interacting. I find I like that. Like, uh, um, it reminded me more of like when I was a kid being involved in like punk rock communities and stuff, you know, people know each other, they're talking to each other. Um, but do you know, like, uh, do you know Ski Beats? Ski Beats? Um... Yeah, he, he runs challenges and a thing called the Smoke Pack. And um, he's a very legendary producer. He like produced one of Jay-Z's biggest hits early okay. on, Dead Prez. I'm out for... Uh, Dead Press to represent me, that that uh, that track um, off of one of Jay Z's first records, and he's yeah. he's got a few like big '90s boom bap yeah. hips, but um, he really has a nice community too. So you should definitely check them out. Okay, you know, but yeah. they're they're definitely way more boom bap focused. Okay. Yeah, they are very good lab, uh, boom bap label in, uh, Ger in in Germany. Uh, um, so I wow. found, yeah. So I found that they they are a very good um, com community of, very, of of boom bap. They 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 are doing very good um, product and beat and uh, album uh, in 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 Germany, but. Um, Lo-fi in general, it's it's very very um, uh, yeah, but it's not very popular here uh, in in Canada, maybe and in the U.S. In, uh, in, in, uh, Va in Vancouver, it's big, and in, in yeah. the U.S., it's huge. It's in the yeah, U.S., well, it's huge, and yeah. Well, uh, I mean, well, let, let's let's define lo-fi. Yeah. <laughs> like, is it just lo-fi production and beats, or is it like playlist lo-fi, like study music, what all these kids in college are listening to while they're studying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or like, or it's playing in, in bars late at night or hotel lounges. Mm -hmm. That stuff is very popular. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, because I mean, I see all the paperwork and all the analytics and yeah. when I look at where all the streams are coming from, like 90% of the streams are coming from U.S. colleges. Yeah. So and, that's and, crazy. And you know why? Uh, uh, you know, um, uh, um, I, um, I, I began to, um, uh, to, to, uh, listen more lo-fi uh, a few years ago and uh, I maybe I discover I discover this this type of music and this is this type of music that gave me the the uh, um, uh, give give me the the, uh, the 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 taste to uh, to 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 uh, 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 to to do beats again, so uh, I it, it all began uh, with with that few years ago uh, because I was listening uh, lo-fi uh, very very much uh, in, in uh, um, uh, because I I was working at home and uh, and all and all that, uh, but. Oh, I lost your sound. Yeah, yeah. it's it's yeah, good. Back. Yep. Yeah. So when I when when I start again to 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 make beats, uh, um, I find I found myself uh, not too, not not too much enjoying doing this type of beat. So very slow beat. Uh, I'm not very in the in the in the mood to 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 do this. I I, I prefer to doing beat uh, uh, 
uh, above uh, 75 uh, B BPM. So I yeah. really love to, to listen to this type of music, but um, not much to, to doing that. But um, there is very, very good lo-fi lo lo beat at uh, 80, uh, 85 uh, BPM, maybe 90 uh, or above, uh, above 75. Yeah. Uh, so for for me, I call it uh, uh, chill chill up or jazz up or uh, feel yeah. good music or good vibe music or uh, so yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think my my daughter just watching the video right now. <laughs> Is she Alexa Coat? Yes. <laughs> maybe, maybe she's laughing at me. <laughs> How old are your kids? I have some kids too, so I'm curious. Uh, for, 14 and 16. Okay, so your, your kids are older than my kids. Mine are 8 and 5. Ah, yeah. yeah. So maybe, maybe I'm so older I'm than, a, than I, you? <laughs> no, you're not older than okay. me, but I just had, I had kids later. Okay. But I cool. may have to I may I might have to divert to you and get some parenting advice. Okay. okay. <laughs> when, when they get into the teenage years. Yeah, yeah. When they come teenager and uh, and the uh, smartphone yeah. and the uh, social uh, yeah. media and all that. So it's so yeah. it's something. Fortunately, my kids don't well, well they know about that. My son's kind of a whiz on the computer. Um, okay. But, but I don't let, I don't have them on the computer a lot. I I've been raising them more organically, um, but I mean, you know, you can't <laughs> deny them. They're in school with other kids who have these things, you know? So what am I going to do? Hold them back? <laughs> right? Um, hey, listen, can you, give cool. me one, yep. can, can you give me one minute? I, I just need to uh, jump to the bathroom for a minute, then I'll come back because I want to ask you a okay. question or two. Okay, I'll okay. Leave you, I'll leave you with some music. We're listening okay. to uh, Francis the Mute and Jury right now. Okay. Be right back. Regarde tu les vidéos? Tu vas regarder? Be grateful, make music, make love, and set it free. 
Mm-hmm. Hey, that was uh, the Lift Me Up remix featuring Coyote from D.C. and Euro Gynico from Mauritania, who raps a lot in French and Fulani. I think I lost your uh, your headphones again. Yep. But yeah, you should look up that artist, uh, Euro Gynico. I dropped his name in the uh, chat. Uh, he's an artist I work in, work with um, quite often. He's he lives here in the Netherlands, and uh, he's rapping mainly in French and uh, Fulani. Like I said, he's out of Mar Mauritania. <laughs> Okay. Well, okay. So you do, do you um, did you do, uh, do 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 you spoke uh, with uh, many people, uh, many person uh, tonight? So how no, how, no. how was your uh, your your live uh, tonight? My live was uh, pretty poorly attended. I spoke to more people on WhatsApp. <laughs> okay, okay, but right now in Amsterdam, but you you are living in in Amsterdam, right? I live in Amsterdam. I'm originally from uh, Manhattan, New York. I grew up in uh, Long Island and on Manhattan. Okay, and um, I moved over here about ten years ago. I married a Dutch girl. Okay, uh, we got a couple kids, and um, yeah, that's kind of what's happening. So right you are there. an American. First, I so was. I was. I'm you, an ex-American. An ex. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah. So uh, right now it's uh, three, 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 twenty, three twenty-six. Okay. So uh, so late. you so you you decide to do this at this at this time to to. Uh, um, to be able to reach uh, all the, the the people uh, in, in in the east east coast of uh, yeah. yes yes and no okay I would have did it earlier in the day but I got home uh, I got home tonight very late I had a studio session and I knew it was was going to be late and it was more like okay so part of the idea of this is last year when when i picked the date of february 23rd to release the first tune aptly with another artist named mr freed out, yep. out of austria somebody i had been working with a lot over the last two years um yeah i know I, him okay but no, great guy. Uh, not not personally but uh, i i i follow well i'm gonna tell you you should get to know him because he's a great guy his name is uh, ziggy and um, he's just a dope musician. He's just a good, good person all around. Um, that's my experience with him. Um, I was a fan of his music, so I, I was happy when I got to work with him. Mm -hmm. So before we decided on that date, like we knew we wanted to release this song. I had just gotten the, the distro for the label. I almost didn't do it because at that time I had a lot of, I had some things going on in my personal life. It was just like, it wasn't really the right time. But I also, there was a part of me that felt like this is the only time because if I don't do it now, mm -hmm. you won't, you won't accomplish what you have in your mind right so that part of this is like you know what if nobody turned turned up for the live i would still be here drinking my beer playing the songs and looking at myself in the camera and talking to the camera right <laughs> 
<laughs> but a couple people, a couple people tapped in. I got to talk to you more and get to know you. So part of part of it is like the idea is like sometimes you just got to do things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You have to do it for yourself. And so when I launched the la the label last year on February twenty third, I was also doing it for myself. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I yeah. had the I, I had the idea. I had, I had the, I had the things kind of lined up, right? And I just felt like if if I don't do it now, then these potential partners that are interested in what mm -hmm. I'm doing will lose interest. Yeah. So just, 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 start, just it. jump. Just, just, do just, it. just, yeah. Just do it. Yeah. Just do it, and um, some things are not gonna. Some things are not going to work out properly. Other things yeah. are going to work out properly. And and an artist said to me, "So, give, tell me your year with the label." And I said, "Well, it's hand in hand. It's been success and failure, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're like this. They're like this. But there is a balance." Between, there's a, there's I guess a, there's a balance. There's, there's, and what happens a is, positive balance, I guess. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's there's an ebb and a flow, you know, like a wave. Yeah. But what yeah. you what you realize after a while is is that the failures are temporary. The successes are more permanent or more lasting. Yeah. Right. Um. So for me now. The, the whole idea of failure is more like it's part of the doing the business and letting it, letting the idea evolve. Yeah, it's a part of um, the process for sure. Exactly. So it's not really a failure. It's like it might it's be learning. A set, it might be a setback. It might be a learning curve, right? But you have to do it to get to it, the it, next. It's the, the opportunity. Yeah, it's the opportunity to fix. Uh, what is wrong in the process, and uh, like like you said, just uh, take a, a step back, fix some some bugs, yeah. and uh, yeah, 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 work and, and, smarter, and, not harder, and go forward. You learn. Yeah. yeah. So that that has been the uh, that's like the premise of the live. Yeah. Right. For for me, I I had this opportunity. So like I said, the last uh, six weeks. And I decide to uh, to to um, I decide to uh, to push it um, a, a little bit just just to see what what can I do uh, and uh, yeah so I, I make more beats I met I I I make more better beats and I decide to. Um, to uh to 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 submit it at some labels and and uh and uh, look at all the the the, the submission uh, the the label uh, 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 labels o uh, doing open submission like like you and uh, so uh i i did uh, a lot of beat and i and i send it and you are the one that <laughs> that answered me for for now, and uh, so uh, did. Did anybody else respond to you? Uh, I I I have a a, a beat. Uh, I I supposed to release a beat on a compilation on a compilation with uh, Will House. Uh, Will House is it's a beat maker from I Ireland. Mm -hmm. And and he, he, he start his own label called uh, True School Record. And okay, I don't, I don't so, know. Yeah, True School Records, and uh, it's very boom bap. It's truly uh, boom bap style. And uh, I have a couple of beat uh, boom bap style, and uh, and I decide to send send one of of those uh, to to him, and he. He, he, he answered me that 
uh, the beat uh, he, he like he likes the he, he like the the beat and uh, he want to uh, release it on uh, on his compilation so uh, we'll we'll see but uh, for well, but I'm for looking, I'm, I'm looking at him right now and I know a few artists that follow him and they're all good artists so he, he must be doing something he right. really he release he, he he don't release very much with his own label um, in the last uh, couple of weeks uh, he released on chill moon and um, and uh, ghetto street ghetto street yeah. records and chill moon yeah. so chill moon it's more like um, chill hop music and ghetto street it it's more like boom bap. Yeah, I know them. I have a release coming up with an artist <coughs> from a um, who just released a song today with a ghetto street called Tape Heads. Yeah, and the artist is named uh, Galkin. Okay, and he's got a track coming out with me in a couple weeks. Okay. Yeah, I mean I love boom bap. You know, I'm a, I'm a New York kid. Even when I didn't like it, I had no choice but to pay attention to it. And understand that it was a force of fucking nature, <laughs> <laughs> because it was blasting out of every fucking car in New York City, like unstoppable. Yeah. You know? So uh, yeah, th this is one of my favorite style, um, and uh, yeah, but uh, more more beats I I do. More, uh, uh, um, I think um, I have. I I want to do more music, like more, uh, more more like jazz up, chill up style, uh, a little little bit softer. Can I say mm -hmm. softer? Yeah, it's a good word. Sure. And yeah. uh, softer, not uh, not lower in 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 bpm but but just ch more more chill and uh not too aggressive uh i think for the i think for the instrument uh, for for the instrumental part for for uh if if i'm doing beat for artists and i and i don't want to i don't want to push the side of 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 beat making doing doing bit beats for uh, for other artists, it's not very what I want to do. I want to to do my my own music. This is why I I put a little um, a little uh, final touch with with some vocals, and uh, I I want to that my beat sounds like um, a track, a real track, not right. just a, a beat uh, about uh, one one and a half minute. I I want to to, to I you want to make want a song. To, I, I, yeah, I want to make a song, and this is why I. Um, but uh, hey, I'm. I got, I, got, I got a great artist for you. I got a girl, man. Can she sing? And she speaks French. She's from uh, Montreal. Okay. But, but lives in, in. She lives in. Uh, she lives in Berlin. Uh, um, she's. Okay. Real. Her name's Jasmine. She's really got a really unique voice and. Um, yeah, I signed her to Tracklib. She's doing really well there. Um, but I actually now that I think about it, you you guys would probably have a good vibe together. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna send you I'm gonna send you a link to her. Okay. Cool. Cool. So especially, especially if you want vocals yep. or, or more song like stuff. Yeah, because. Uh, with the vocals like like you uh, like you 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 uh, you was uh, asking me uh, it, it's not uh, if you want to be legit uh, it's not uh, very easy to have vocal uh, just take uh, uh, the, 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 the a cappella on a, on, a, on a vinyl or right. so uh, it's a little bit uh, not dangerous, but uh, yeah, if you want to to do thing, uh, do legit thing, you you have to uh, you have to own 
all the um, all all the right and 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 all that yeah i mean yeah. definitely de definitely that de listen what i would tell you to getting more into stuff like it's great to just want to do the music right because that's what you want to do but you also have to understand that when you're talking to labels and stuff mm -hmm. all these labels or people who have started labels they're also thinking about business yeah right so just read it read the paperwork um, um there's tons of places you can get vo vocals yeah you know, so you can do splice or whatever, you know, everything has its pluses and its benefits. It depends what you're looking for. Yeah. You know, you know? I mean, I know the last year splice has had a big problem where producers have been going and making copyright claims against other producers who use the same royalty free sample. Okay. Like, thinking that they own the sample, but anybody, mm -hmm who has a splice subscription can use those samples you don't get that, um priority like no. exclusiveness no yeah right you but only some people, uh, some, but you, some people some people think that yeah but i i read that and uh and uh yeah so you only have the um, the license but you you don't own the no. uh, the audio you you no. only have the license to yeah you, but, have, a li yeah. you have a license to re to re to use it in a new composition yeah but you don't have the exclusivity if you yeah no, right you can't say nobody else can use it mm -hmm. right yeah so yeah it's uh it's but it's, it's uh, listen as long as you pay attention to the business, it's not that big of a deal. No. Right? It's 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 really it's not that complicated. Um, you just have have to understand what you're doing. Like, and when I say that, it means you just need to read read the basic uh, fine print and paperwork. Yeah. And uh, and right right now the 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 music music uh, world is very open to the to the um, to all that uh, Man, sampling sampling te techniques it. yeah it loves it so, so we uh, back in the days uh, the the sample all uh, they they have uh, the vinyl to to the they dig through uh, the, the 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 vinyl, but but right now with the sample pack and all that, it, it, you, you, track you can, lib, the sample yeah, universe, and, loop cloud. You got many options. Yes, and you and it open also to all the artists, um, the comp composer, and uh, all, all all the all the artists uh, that uh, they they want to to make music but they have also the opportunity to do music to uh to to sell it to um the person who, who will sam sample uh those music and uh, so uh, uh, it's a big world for sure yeah agreed agreed i mean if i didn't think that i wouldn't be involved with it you know mm -hmm. Because I've had a few people tell me personally, like, there's splice out there, there's track lib. What are you doing? But I'm like, yeah, it's a, I'm a little bit different, you know. I have mm -hmm. a little different idea, you know. So why wouldn't I do it? Because there's so many people, you know. And sometimes you have some stuff that doesn't exist yeah. anywhere else. You know, yeah, and what, what, what is what is one of the keys of sampling? It's finding something nobody else has ever touched. Yeah, and if you are smaller, you you are going you 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 gonna have uh, more exclusive stuff uh, than than uh, uh, because, uh, like you said, on 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 splice. 
there are many sub subscribers, many big. person. Uh, uh, what? They're big. Spons they're big. Spons yeah, spons. yeah. So, so if if you are smaller, you you gonna have uh, less customer. But for those customer, they will have ex more exclusive sounds, and so it's more attractive, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it, it kind of falls into the term boutique. Okay. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but listen, I sent you, yeah. uh, I, sent, I sent through the Sample Universe's uh, DM, I sent you uh, Jasmine's um, Instagram. You should check her out. She's got a really great record on uh, Spotify. I think it's, I believe it's called Soul Brother. Soul Brother. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I love this girl singing, man. Okay. She was, um, I was trying to sign her to Tracklet for like two or three years. And when I finally did it, when I got it done, I was so happy. And about within six months, a really big production crew used a bunch of her vocals. And I was like, I knew it. I just knew it, man. I knew if I got those vocals on there, that some 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 heavy hitters would come by and scoop them up. Mm. You know. So, and I think I still think even with with these little, um, I mean, I would consider them little uh, successes. I think Jasmine's vocals meant like they could they could be international you know so reach out to her talk french <laughs> <laughs> i think i'm running out of battery uh... that's no problem Fred, because i'm i'm about to sign off i gotta get to bed i gotta get i got an early appointment in the morning but man, I really appreciate you tapping in and let me let me see a little bit more behind your uh, process. And it's been great to chop it up with you. And I'm really excited for your tracks that will be on our spring compilation. I think you did great work. And um, if you did that during your seven week period, man, I'm, I'm happy to have it, <laughs> you know, and, and let's see where it goes from there. Yeah, so my, my big uh, issue right now is to, um, it, it, it's to be able to continue uh, with my, my new job, uh, to be able to continue at a good rhythm. It, it, for sure, I'm going to, to continue, but at a good rhythm, uh, because, because it, it, take, it takes a lot of time to, to to put out a, a beat, uh, many yeah. hours, and uh, and I and I like to do something original. I, I I don't like to 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 just just doing a loop uh, for yeah for two for for two minutes. I, I, I like I said, I well, want to do track, and I want to, uh, to 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 put some little details in some arrangement. So this is my style. And, okay, I'm um, going to give you a piece of advice. Okay. Um, oh, wait, no. It's, maybe it's not advice. I'm going to offer my opinion on what you just said about time. Um, don't, don't be afraid to deal with things in smaller bits, bits of time. Okay. You know, or even work faster than you normally do. Okay. You know, um, I mean, I know at points I've had like, so I work at three different labels besides doing my own stuff, right? So I'm wearing a lot of hats and sometimes I've realized if I didn't love what I was doing at each, with each little thing, I would be, I would be overstretched. Yeah. Right. I had, i taken on too much, but then I really started realizing like, it's about time management. Yeah. And when I started saying, okay, for me as the artist, my creative self, I'm going to make sure you have time 
right? A couple days a week or, you know, I look at the schedule and I say, okay, from yep. here to here, I don't have to do anything else. If I want to play music, great. If I want to watch a movie, great. But that's just my time, you know? So um, I've become much better at time management you know, while working my other jobs and doing my other stuff, being a parent, you know, you know the deal. So I know exactly what you're saying, but for me personally, when I managed my time better outside of responsibilities, then I, I was getting very good creative results. And in half the amount of time that I was normally spending. So, yeah. So you you are a, a musician too. You oh, yeah. you you do music. You do music. Yeah. Do yeah. Yeah, are... yeah. All those original all those original lo-fi beats I sent you. Those are my beats. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I'm the, I was always a musician first, and, and I was pretty much a professional touring musician up until eight years ago when I had my first child. And I still do some tours here and there, depending. Sometimes I'm playing, sometimes I'm working on the technical or business side. Um, but it just wasn't as viable to, um, for me, I didn't feel like, uh, man, I don't want to miss this time with my children. So <laughs> for, many, for many years, people had, had been encouraging me saying, listen, James, you, you should be doing A&R or you should be working more in the, in the music yeah. business because you, you understand what artists are thinking, but you also understand this business side. So you're a good, like, middle person, a liaison between the artist and the business. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's been kind of, a, that's been part of the idea, too, with, like, the Sample Universe and, and GBO. You know, it's like, I'll help our, I'm helping a lot of artists get their paperwork hooked up, you know, simple things that we just want to avoid, you know, and I can say, hey, I avoided them for a long time too, you know, but now that I've done it and got through it, I'm much happier. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. what, why, why would I do my hard work, right? Not file some simple paperwork to just collect what is, is owed to me, you know? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't collect it, guess what? It goes to somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't stay out there floating around in the ether. It gets pushed up the system to people who already have plenty. Yeah. So <laughs> that's, that's part of it also. Uh, but you're you're right about uh, time uh, management and and all that and uh, yeah and for sure in in the last <coughs> few weeks I I think I uh, I I put uh, many things together to be uh, to be able to, um, to to be more organized and uh, I think if uh more things are settled to to uh to, to be more productive and uh, uh i think i i use this time very uh very uh, very good for uh um, to to be able to to be uh yeah like i said more productive and uh so uh I'm not worried about about, uh, about the future, but I'm I'm going to have uh, less time for sure. Uh, but I am more uh, educated and more uh, organized, so um, I think I will be able. I I'm I'm, I'm going to be able to uh, to do uh, to, to do good music in with a. Uh, 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 a good amount of, of time in in a good amount of time uh, i don't know well, if i express myself uh, correctly but yeah uh, no I, I i hear what you're saying and uh, i'm gonna I'm i think gonna i'm, 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 I'm going to look forward I, to hearing what setup. you do
Yeah. I'm going to look forward to hearing what you do. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think, um, I'm going to, um, to leave you on this and, uh, yeah, I'm out of here too. So yeah. we're going to end on a good, we're going to end on a good note. And the, the note is just do it better time <laughs> management and w have fun. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. And thank all right. You well, listen, Freed Beats, thanks for tapping in with me. Um, I appreciate it. I enjoyed getting to know you a little bit better. And listen, I know you got some songs coming out. <laughs> yeah. So, but, you know, let, let me know what I could do to help you. And, uh, you know, just keep doing your thing. I think it sounds really great. And it's got a, a good, fresh energy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we keep All right, so, and, uh, so yeah, thank okay. you, thank you to to having me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, well, listen, listen to my to my poor English. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. And listen, I appreciate you speaking so much English outside of your uh, mother tongue. So um, it's been great. And let's see. Oh, okay. So here we go. We're closing out this live. We're gonna say good night to Freed Beat, <laughs> and we're heading out with Bayfi and the first song from his uh, album titled Frosty Fr Flakes, and this song is called Cake Mix. So, okay. um, so I'm yeah, gonna, we're, at, we're out of here. I'm just chilling. I'm going to take fade another up. beer and, yeah. just, and just listen to your beat. There you go. This is Bayfi's beat, and he sampled uh, my artist Mirta uh, Vanderwaiter in. And I love this, man. I love this record. This is one of my favorite records, man. The coffee in the morning. You know, I'm like, I'm hoping to get on a beach somewhere, maybe in the south of France this summer. That's warm and just bump this. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right. Thank you, beat. James. One Peace. love. We'll Stop. talk soon. <laughs> Bye. All right, people. One year. GBO is one year old. The Sample Universe is two years old. Man, what a journey it's been. But listen, I want to thank everybody. You know, the few people that tapped in. It's just good to see you. And the theme of this, if you watch this 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 20 years from now, just do it. Get started, worry about the other shit later.
success and failure goes hand in hand. That's how it goes, you know? It's learning experiences. You gotta grow. So with that, we're heading out with uh, Lost Tribe music and uh, conviving with me. And uh, that's it. I'm signing off from this live. And yeah, when this song ends, we out of here. So I'm going to crack my last beer. Probably won't drink for another month or two, but it's been worth it. Good night. Mission of the Thousand.